I want to get straight into the U.S. response to the crisis in the Middle East with my first guest, Michael Doran, senior fellow and director of the Center for Peace and Security in the Middle East at the Hudson Institute. Michael, thanks so much for joining us on the U.S. Report. Let's get straight into it. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has landed in Israel and met with Benjamin Netanyahu. What message is he sending to the Israelis and what does he want to achieve with this trip? Uh, hi, James. Thanks for having me. It's great to see you. Uh, he's he's there uh, to express support for Israel uh, and to, I think, uh, help Israel uh, prevent Hezbollah from opening a second front in the north. Uh, the, the nightmare scenario for the Israelis uh, was a kind of um, a one-two punch where Hamas would hit them in the south and then they'd get an uppercut from uh, from Hezbollah in the north, and I think the the Americans, I think the Biden administration, uh, you won't hear me say this very often, but I think they've done the right thing here, uh, and they have uh, moved uh, they've moved significant naval assets into the eastern Mediterranean um, uh, in order to deter Hezbollah, and I think. Um, uh, Blinken is there to uh, monitor the situation, uh, show support, um, and um, uh, and uh, uh, make sure that we don't uh, have a wider regional war, which would be a disaster for the United States. Well, absolutely, it would be, and it's all. But I, I kind of feel like it's all very well and good that the U.S. is sending an aircraft carrier to the region. It's announced military supplies, but on, this, on the other hand, Michael, it seems kind of schizophrenic, given that the U.S. has also empowered Iran so much under Joe Biden and Barack Obama before him. So, I mean, in a sense, they're trying to prevent somebody that they turned into a regional hegemon from acting like a regional hegemon. Well, uh, James, you've dra you've uh, dragged me away from my uh, supportive statements for, uh, very quickly, and uh, <laughs> my, my 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 ability to hold up this front of uh, solidarity with the White House is uh, uh, is quickly eroding. Uh, I agree with you 100. Uh, percent It it is schizophrenic. Um, the in addition to uh, while they uh, while I think they have done the right thing in in uh, in supporting. Uh, Israel against uh, Hamas, uh, their policy against Iran uh, inadvertently, I don't think this was ever their goal, but it inadvertently um, uh, incentivized and rewarded violence by Iran through proxies, especially uh, Hamas and, and Hezbollah. And uh, the, the policy is continuing to reward it uh, by uh, refusing to admit that Iran had a hand in this uh, in this uh, war in the in these horrific attacks, Iran is the strategic en enabler of uh, Hamas. The ties between Hamas and Iran are so strong, so deep, so well understood. Uh, to say, which the administration is saying repeatedly now, that there's no evidence that Iran had anything to do uh, directly to do with this attack is just uh, ludicrous. Yeah, I mean, that just seems, as you say, ludicrous here. We know that Hamas essentially wouldn't exist without Iran, Hezbollah, the same thing. So why won't the U.S. now do what seems like the logical step? Cut off Iran, say you're not getting that $6 billion back, put sanctions on the oil, and return Tehran to the pariah status that they enjoyed, if that's the word, before Barack Obama decided to start normalizing things with them through the JCPOA. Well, this uh, policy of um, of engaging with Iran and uh, trying to use the engagement to moderate uh, the problems in the region uh, is really deeply entrenched in their worldview. They strongly believe they don't want they won't admit this openly, uh, but they strongly believe that uh, the Israeli and Saudi conflicts with Iran were forcing the United States to take extreme positions uh, against Iran that were not in the American interest, and that if the United States would distance itself from its allies somewhat, reach out to Iran, show a willingness to come to a, an accommodation with Iran, that would, that would reduce tensions throughout the region. You may have seen 
uh, Jake Sullivan, the National Security Advisor, recently had an interview with uh, Jeffrey Goldberg. That was a public uh, interview with him, Jeffrey Goldberg of The Atlantic magazine, uh, in which uh, Sullivan said basically that, that the, the policy of uh, de-escalating and engagement um, if, and uh, efforts to integrate the region were making it a much uh, quieter place. Yeah, no, we played a little bit of that earlier in the program, and it's just kind of shocking to me because especially when you look at it in the context of, say, Ukraine, and we're told, well, you can't appease Russia, you can't do anything uh, to, to make a deal with them. We're also told, well, Iran, which has been since 1979, since the Iranian Revolution, a sworn enemy of the great state in the United States, well, let's normalize, let's de-escalate, let's uh, let them have a hand, let's let them dominate the region. Again, it feels like there's a bigger puzzle going on where America's enemies are seeing advantage in creating more chaos and getting rewarded for it. How does this happen and what comes next? Well, I think, you know, the, the I think the analogy with Ukraine is um, is pretty apt. They had a concept in their heads when they came into the, the White House that um, by going, uh, by returning uh, Nord Stream 2, by lifting the sanctions on Nord Stream 2, uh, that they were uh, fostering uh, economic cooperation between Germany and Russia, Nord Stream 2 being the, the gas pipeline uh, from Russia to, to Germany, uh, and that that was going to, uh, that was going to, this was their word, park Putin. He was going to be happy with them, uh, and that was going to allow them to focus on the real problem that is at the forefront of their mind, which is the, the military contest with China and the South China Sea. Simil similarly, in, um, in the Middle East, they told themselves that if they returned to the JCPOA, and reached out to the um, to the Iranians. That would also kind of park the Iranians. Uh, they still haven't entirely left that mindset. Uh, they they once they realized they couldn't get back to the JCPOA with the Iranians. Now they've moved to a policy of um, of uh, uh, quiet understandings under the table, you know, behind the scenes. Mm. So a kind of a kind of a JCPOA light. And there, it's gonna it's gonna take um, uh, a crisis. I think perhaps bigger than the one that we've seen here uh, to uh, uh, to get them out of that mindset. And finally, what does the United States need to do, the Biden administration, whoever's running the show in it, um, to prevent this conflict from turning into an even wider conflagration? You know, one which may see China decide to try try its hand. Uh, in uh, in Taiwan and and really turn this into a real sort of World War III type of situation. All of the answers are in Tehran. The the, the Tehran that's the head office. The, what the what what the, you know where this analysis that you and I have just developed, where this all leads, is to the conclusion that the United States is supporting uh, uh, is supporting. Israel in going after Iran's rabid dog, Hamas, but it won't support Israel um, in going after the owner of the rabid dog, who has four or five other rabid dogs mm. in, his, uh, in, 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 his, in, in his hands. Until we, until we go after the, the, um, the Iranians, this kind of thing is going to continue and it's going to erode the American order in the region. When I say go after, it doesn't have to be a war. It doesn't have to be, uh, uh, you know, a major military uh, a military effort, but we have to set up an offense dominant American regime in the region where Iran realizes that when it does things with like when its proxies behave the way Hamas just behaved, that Iran will pay an unbearable price. And we we're, we've done just the opposite. We've 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 told them that they can do this and get a free pass. Michael Doran, thank you so much for your analysis. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Have a good night.